All right, this first video is gonna cover transcutaneous pacing. So with transcutaneous pacing, we're taking an electrical current, putting it through our DFib pads, our quick combo pads, and kind of beating that heart for our patient. So it does require a lot less energy. So we're gonna use milliamps instead of joules. Um, and for our DFib pads, it's best if we place the pads on the front of the chest and the back of the chest so we get a better current going through the heart. If we can't get our patient to our patient's back, we could always do the front of the chest and the side uh, like we typically do like for our AD AEDs. So here I have a patient in sinus bradycardia at 40 beats per minute. Get a little bit of ST elevation there, um, um, but we're gonna go ahead and say that this patient is unstable due to their bradycardia and they need some kind of transcutaneous pacing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my pads are hooked up to my patient and I already have my quick combo pads hooked up to my uh, rhythm generator. And I'm going to hit over here on the far side of the monitor in this green area, and this is true for any life pack, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my pacer. Now my life pack automatically prompts me to select a pulse per minute. Um, I'm, my monitor is set to start at 80. I like to move it down to 70. It's pretty typical for when we're going to start pacing our patients. All right, you can see I start getting some arrows up there. So it's going to try to start pacing. And what it's doing is it's trying to capture um, that electrical impulse that the heart already has. So it automatically prompts me to go to milliamps. If it didn't, I could just move down from rate to current and hit current on my monitor. And it'll bring me back to the same spot. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my milliamps, and you can see I'm starting to get some pacer spikes. And what I want is I want those pacer spikes to be able to line up with the QRS complex. So I still need to increase a little bit, and I'm going to slowly just go up till I get capture, meaning those pacer spikes are going to match up with my QRS complex. All right, and you can see right here I have electrical capture. So see how my spikes now match up with my QRS complex? And then I should be able to feel a mechanical pulse on my patient with that pacing. So seeing it on the monitor is called electrical capture. That means that the monitor is showing that we have some kind of capture with the heart rate to raise the heart rate. But really the best way to make sure that this is working for my patient is to feel for that mechanical capture. So I want to actually feel a pulse on my patient and see if it coincides with the pulse on my monitor, which should be 70 beats per minute. Now I do have a wide QRS here with my pacer spike. That's because the pacer works on the ventricles of the heart, so it will be a wide complex for transcutaneous pacing. So I should see that pacer spike march up with, and that QRS widen then. Um, so I can see the wide complex. Now, we don't typically take our patients off pacing, but if you were, you would just go ahead and turn off your pacer by hitting the pacer button again. And now I wanna show you the process one more time and I'll do it with a heart block this time. So pacing works with any bradycardic rhythm as long as you can get capture. So this is a third degree heart block and it's bradycardic, very bradycardic at 37 beats per minute. This patient's very symptomatic, and again, I wanna pace them. So we're just gonna go through the process one more time. I'm gonna press pacer. It's gonna prompt me to set my pulse per minute, or I can use this toggle, or I can use the dial. I'm gonna go down to 70 pulse per minute, press in on the dial. Automatically brings me down to current. And I'm just going to slowly increase the current till I see that spike match up with my QRS complexes. And now we can see my pacer is matching up with my QRS. My QRS is already wide in this rhythm, but I wanna see that wide QRS come immediately following that pacer spike. That means I have capture. I can go ahead and press the center dial in again. And now my patient is being paced.